me, innovation means either making a discovery or making some type of invention. Um, you know that that hopefully will do a tremendous amount of good, and uh, and, and a lot of people will want to use it, and uh, you know, and it can make some type of impact on on, on the world. I'm a chemical engineer, but when I finished, I ended up going to a surgery department in, in uh, Boston Children's Hospital and I ended up being the only engineer there. And to me, it was almost like being a kid in a candy store because I, you know, thought about things from an engineering standpoint, chemical engineering, which is my background, and everybody there was thinking about it from a biology or medical standpoint. So I got involved in a number of things. I mean, my first uh, thing that I started working on was could we come up with a way to stop blood vessels from growing because that's what my advisor wanted to do. And so I started working on that and it was an unsolved problem. One of the things that I had that I did to make that happen was create what's called a bioassay because the substances we were trying to study, uh, they were fairly large molecules like peptides or proteins or, or actually DNA or RNA. And so I had to find a way to take tiny little particles or create tiny little particles that could deliver them uh, to the body. And so we published a paper actually 45 years ago showing for the first time you could put any of these large molecules in. I'll come back to that in a second uh, and use it as a delivery system. And, and actually people felt it was impossible. They, uh, the, you know, I was actually widely criticized for this. I got my first nine grants turned out and I actually couldn't get a, a faculty job in a chemical engineering department. But at any rate, um, we were able to use uh, those tiny material pellets, uh, tiny materials, micro and nanoparticles to actually create this bioassay and study these substances for uh, stopping blood vessels from growing. And many, many years later, that would lead to all kinds of new drugs like Avastin and uh, Ilea and others. And these are used by many, many millions, tens of millions of people every year for treating cancer and blind diseases of blindness like macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. Interestingly, the drug delivery system systems that I had helped create or that I created uh, also became widely used. Uh, I got involved in starting companies and licensing these to companies, but it would set the basis for doing all kinds of uh, drug delivery work. And, uh, and, and so, I mean, the most recent, of course, there is an example of a company I helped start called Moderna which uses these uh, variations of these tiny particles to deliver messenger RNA. And that, of course, has been crucial to the COVID vaccine, uh, because you, if you're dealing with these sensitive molecules, you have to have a way to protect them and then deliver them into the body. But that's kind of how I got started. And then I, you know, I kept going from there. My first advice is make sure you get you know, make sure you succeed in your classes first. I think classes could come first, always should come first. And and, and, and don't take on more, th a lot of times I've watched, you know, people come in, young students, and they want to do everything, all kinds of extracurricular activities, innovation, social things, you know, classes. You know, my feeling is classes should come first and, and doing well in those classes should come first. I just don't like to take a chance. You know, that would be my advice. That was my advice to my own children. But if you, if you really feel that you're successful in the classes, then MIT, I think, is the best undergraduate research program in the country, the Europe program. And, you know, we've had many people, so do all labs, have many people doing Europe's. And, and that's been a fantastic way to learn about innovating. You work with professors, you work with un other undergrads, with graduate students, with visiting scientists. So I think it's been a tremendous program. And, it, and, and, and that is, I think, the best way to in learn how, about innovation. One of the amazing things to me is that Kendall Square, the area that MIT's in, has the highest concentration of biotechnology companies in the world. And that area has, you know, in Kendall Square has just created so many new life-saving technologies. I mean, Moderna, which I mentioned, which I helped start and I'm on the board of, you know, that's half a block from my office. And there's so many great companies, uh, you know, Biogen, El Nylum, I mean, all kinds of startups. I mean, it's it's just a remarkable place. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, offer summer jobs and things like that as well. And, and uh, you know, there's lectures by these people and, you know, you can't help but being around MIT and just being immersed in, in innovation. 
you know, so our lab, I mean, we like to, you know, we have a big lab and it's also very interdisciplinary, maybe about 10 different disciplines. And we want to do basic curiosity driven research, but we also want it to make a, an impact. And so really, I, I guess the way I kind of look at it is my goal, you know, up till somebody, you know, the way I look at it is when people come to MIT, uh, basically they're always judged on how well they give answers to other people's questions, right? You get to take a test and you get a 95 if you get, get all the, or 100 if you get all the answers right. But really in life, what's key isn't just the answers you give, but the questions you ask. You know, and I want people to ask really big questions. That's what our lab tries to do. Questions that I hope that if we can figure out answers, they will change the world.